Welcome back to A Cow's Opinion for your midweek update. What is A Cow's Opinion? It's where I go over all the latest and greatest news and video games and adjacent areas and then give you my opinion. There's no use in getting salty in the comments down below because it is A Cow's Opinion. It is a moo point. Doesn't matter. And today, we're going to start off by looking at Mark Zuckerberg who had to fire 11,000 people after burning through 15 billion with a B in cash. I got this wrong. And I take responsibility for that. Newsflash, he's not taking responsibility. So, unfortunately, it was confirmed that Facebook has sacked 13% of their workforce. As we probably pointed out on rumors in earlier videos. And I just want to go back to this because it's ridiculous when they've already spent $15 billion on a metaverse project that nobody wants. So Zuckerberg went over and talked to his employees about the most difficult changes we've made in Meta's history. I've decided to reduce the size of our team by about 13% and let more than 11,000 of our talented employees go. Now Zuckerberg lays the blame at COVID and he's not wrong, but not the way you think. See, Zuckerberg is saying that because COVID was so good and forced people to stay inside, that they had to hire a ton of people. And they thought it was going to be the new normal, except of course it wasn't. People, It's not that people are going to start using Facebook never. It's just that, you know, you can actually go say hi to friends and have lunch with them instead of having to keep up with them on Facebook due to a worldwide medical situation that YouTube still will uh, suppress my video for if I say it, but CNN can, so whatever. But that's not what happened. He then references the macroeconomic downturn, increased competition, and adds signal loss. I got this wrong, and I take responsibility for that. And again, I like poking fun of him because he ain't taking responsibility. He may sound upset. He may sound unhappy. But his... But his uh, paycheck ain't going down. His job is still safe. He really isn't taking some responsibility so much as he's justifying laying off more than one in ten of his people. And he probably could have kept them up until the economics turned if he hadn't burned through $15 million. The article goes on to say that what he doesn't mention at all is that the company wiped out its massive revenues on Reality Labs, the disastrous metaverse project that even the company's own developers don't want to use. That's not a lie. They've been criticized internally because the developers don't want to spend any time in the metaverse. But the metaverse is meant to replace your work desks, your meeting rooms at work. You're supposed to use it a lot. And the team leads have pointed out, if our own teams don't want to use it, who's going to buy this? Now, they've spent $15 billion since 2021, which means that it's not even been 24 months, and, they've, and they're have and burning through hundreds of millions a month. And average quarterly revenue has been reduced to $30 million since. And, it's, and people have criticized Zuckerberg because he didn't mention this earlier this month when he started all this. And nobody is, in fact, this article here says we reached out to Meta to ask exactly about this. Unfortunately, the only response was to link us back to the memo we were asking about. Now, there are some decent benefits coming up, but that's not the point. This wave of firings comes very soon after Twitter's owner, Elon, has fired half of his workforce. And... Instead, Musk opted for tweeting memes and doing it so badly the company is trying to hire back the people it fired. Which isn't really gaming news, but... Guys, the whole thing about the metaverse is this. It uses a very expensive headset. I'm talking $1,500 or more. First of all, you can get a top-of-the-line console and a game for that much and still have plenty of money to spare hell you can buy a top of the line gaming pc for fifteen hundred dollars so what's the deal with this with meta is trying to do it this way they're trying to sell you a very expensive headset so you wear the headset at all day during work but if i'm wearing the headset i can't use like microsoft excel and various chat programs and other things so their goal is the headset is so expensive because it comes pre-installed with lots and lots of different software programs that businesses are trying to use. This isn't for you and me. 
This is for like mid and large size companies to buy minimum 100 units in order. They're trying to get everyone to look like some post dystopian weird futuristic thing where instead of walking onto a busy floor you walk onto a bunch of people wearing headsets and in meetings with each other even though they're sticking around. Now Facebook has been arguing that it's better now that people are home because they can be in the office but if you're working from home isn't one of the advantages that you're not in the office anymore? It's kind of weird right? It's a little weird. And I don't know, he's really trying to make this work, and it does look a lot better than when he first showed screenshots. But that doesn't mean it looks good. It's better than bad, but it's far from great still. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if it takes at least another two years and another $15 billion burned. And I don't know if Facebook can do that. They have much bigger competition. They have... Lower ad revenues probably through mid to end of 2023 when the economic downturn finally stabilizes because there's a lot going... We stick to gaming news here because you don't, you shouldn't care about my political stuff. There's a lot going on out, even in inside of America, much less outside of America. It's kind of a big time of change, which I guess you can expect after a worldwide medical situation we can't speak about. But guys, that is where it is. Uh, just a little update and a little more information came up. Let's move on to some happier news. The Starship Troopers have a new shooter. So the studio behind the tactical first-person shooter squad is making a new game based on Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers Extermination. We will look at the teaser here real quick. It Which is a 12-player squad-based shooter that pits troopers against swarms of giant bugs and it's going to Windows PC where it will launch in early access. Guys, we're going to, I've only going to make sure that we've got this turned down mostly because I want to blow out your eardrums, but. Off World Industries. It doesn't look bad. Oh, I thought that was my mouse for a second. Ah, uh, there's that iconic warrior. Oh my god, yes. So they tied this to, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Starship Troopers. It has kind of a certain political message, but in a way that doesn't offend anyone, whether you're for or against it, because it's obviously played for satirical purposes. It's so over the top with how the government and society functions in this universe that you can't really get mad at it. And I kind of think that's cool when so much of our media now is purposefully made to get a reaction out of the side that it's not, regardless of which side you are. There are definitely people making stuff with the sole purpose of offending you and getting free media when you complain about it online. So it's timed to the original film's 25th anniversary, which was launched on December, November 7th, excuse me, 1997. What the? Then why are you only announcing this on the 28th, first of all? And second of all, if you're old enough to remember that, you feel really YouTube old, but... Man, it's a awesomely bad film. And I, I mean that in the nicest way. I love the film. I can't help but watch it every, at least a couple of times a year just because I have so much fun with it. Extermination's going to lean more on the guns and guts action of Starship Troopers, with players taking the role of the soldier in the deep space vanguard on a mission to squash bugs on the alien planet Varlaka. Now, the coolest thing is that it's going to be for up to 12 players, and you work in squads of four. You have the obvious classes, which is assault, support, and defense, and your purpose is to get the resources, build and defend your base, and then extract from the world, which sounds kind of cool. They're not limiting all that to support, though. Everybody's going to be able to build a wall, the towers, the ammo stations. The... So you're going to be able to keep... You don't have to worry about having like a bunch of supports who then can't shoot or anything. Players also have at least five bug types, but Offworld is implying there's more to come. And I know that sounds not great, but honestly, that's kind of what you want. The Starship Troopers universe has never been about massive numbers of different types, more about massive numbers of the foot soldiers and their artillery and their 
air bugs, they don't really have like, it's kind of like the regular military in area. You don't have tons and tons of different options. You have a couple of options for each row at the most. But it looks like they're getting it done well. Here are some screenshots. Look at, look at, look at this. Oh, there's the artillery type. That is looking pretty good. There's the iconic rifle of the mobile infantry. Uh, it looks deposit gas canister. So that's some of the resource gathering portion of the game. They haven't talked too much about it. What is that? Looks like that's a loadout screen. There's the dropship behind you. There is you. There's what the insult infantry looks like. Looks like he has a rifle. It looks like he has a handgun for his sidearm. He's got a jetpack. High speed and intentional trading. You can unlock stuff. That's pretty cool. You've got some abilities and some utilities. It does looks like this guy's low enough level that he doesn't have enough options to even fill out all of his slots. I like that. You need to be able to do a lot of stuff in these games. Here is a game map, it looks like. We got prevent arc destruction here. You need to deliver enough gas. You've got secondary objectives. You need to deliver ore to HQ. You need to destroy arachnid patrols. That's... I'm, I'm kind of interested. Here's a victory screen. Operator progression. Levels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and who knows how far it goes. There's your XP for various things. And the log for what you got. You got 200 experience for a tiger. Interesting. Tiger being a stronger version of the standard warrior. So even though there's only five types, I get the feeling that there'll be like... And there's your base building thing, a la Fortnite, but probably a little more gutsy like that. So the teaser trailer isn't showing much, but you can follow it on Steam, and you can say a snip, see a snippet of gameplay in YouTube. Risky click. Risky click, I mean. Um, we're going to try to see it. Here's only 15 seconds of it. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. That's the, uh, it's the ad. I can't skip it. Sorry. Oh, here's 49 seconds. Oh, that's not bad. Dizzy. <laughs> that's the name of the character in the movie. Oh, the gun looks really accurate. Mortars. Interesting. Oh, there's a grenade launcher. I mean, it looks pretty good. That's well, that's pretty much all I want. The main thing that's got my attention on this game besides the universe that I really love is the fact that 12 players at once is pretty good usually on these shooters you only get up to four and as games continue to get better i've always wondered why we don't have bigger first person shooter teams than four so having an entire little like mini rifle company on a map sounds pretty good to me the article will conclude by talking about the few and far between memorable action brought to life by the adaptation of the novel so they had Starship Troopers, Terror and Ascendancy, which is a real-time tactics game. They had a first-person shooter in 2005, earlier this year. And you can find it on the channel if you're interested. Starship Troopers, Terran Command, which had a couple of extra stages for, like, uh, horde modes and stuff drop that we haven't looked at on the channel yet. We do have the main story here. But they are saying that the aristocrats are going to give even more stuff in that game. And we'll probably play it if it does. Guys... That is it. Let us move on to the next portion of our video. And it's a little bit slower news week, but our next story is our last one. The new Super Mario Brothers movie trailer dropped, ladies and gentlemen. And I, for one, am so excited. You can argue that Chris Pratt, uh, I'm actually not going to play it with any sound. We're just going to have it here so you guys can... And just see this one little uh footage of well there you go determined mario which is perfect 
Uh, the Super Mario movie is almost finished. Miyamoto was on a special Nintendo Direct today as they revealed the second trailer. This one not only showed you more of Mario and Chris Pratt's voice, was actually better. You saw more Bowser, Luigi. They showed Princess Peach for the first time. They showed more Toad. They showed freaking Donkey Kong. You just have to go watch this trailer, you guys. There's just... I don't even need to put a link for this first one. You even get let's go and wahoo! And he wears a suit. Peach uses a fire flower. It was absolutely amazing, you guys. Now, this is a movie being made by Illumination in partnership with Nintendo. They're the guys who did the Minions movie as well as all the uh, Gru movies. I think it's Minions. I don't watch them. I'm not their target audience. I'm sorry. But uh, it's got Chris Pratt, Charlie Day, Keegan-Michael K, who's also really cool as Toad. Anna Taylor-Joy is going to be Princess Peach. Jack Black is playing Bowser. Really amazing. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Fred Armisen is Cranky Kong. Uh, just all kinds of amazing voice actors. Uh, obviously written by the Minions Rise of Gru writer and co-directed by the Michael who did Teen Titans Go and Aaron who has done Teen Titans Go to the movies. So it's pretty humorous and really, really cool. Nintendo and Illumination also announced the movie and why most of the cast had fans excited. The casting of Pratt was relentlessly mocked. In October, they got their first take, which is fine. It's fine. He's no Jack Black. And Jack Black really sells Bowser. So coming in April, I mean, it's freaking fantastic how amazing this cast is. Even Chris Pratt is a lot better in this trailer than in the first one. And I think that's actually cool. I know it's kind of a weird flex. It's just that, you know, we like to say that you should get the original. And the original guy who does Mario in the video games is very old and he says his throat is not what it used to be. Also, Mario has never really talked. So, I would I would have loved to see him do the movie as well. Don't get me wrong. Would have been great. But I understand why they felt that they needed all of these names and all of these people with brand recognition to help sell the movie. This movie looks fantastic. It looks exactly like the redone Sonic movie. This is not going to be like the god-awful Resident Evil movie that came to uh, Netflix, or excuse me, Net the series, or that god-awful movie that decided that, hey, you know what, we're going to cram Resident Evil's 1 and 2 into an hour and a half movie, because that's a great idea. We're really smart on this. We'll make a video game movie. do Idiots. That's what they are. Uh, go check out this new trailer. There's so much stuff in it. I could sit here for another 10 minutes and talk about it. But this is your end, middle of the week. This is the end of the video. It's the, I'm just so excited about this trailer. I want to watch it again as soon as we finish recording this to give you guys the ending of your news update for the middle of the week. Front Mission comes out today as well there is a very good chance that oh you know what actually this is coming out uh tonight because front mission comes out tomorrow so you're going to get the first episode of front mission tomorrow so i'm going to go ahead and give you your update video today for middle of the week and we will just have to cram in everything onto the end of the week video playable games games are awesome and you deserve awesome i'll see you next time